Audio. Until the 1990s, portable music players depended on separate physical storage, such as records, tape cassettes, or CDs, compact discs. This changed when the first digital audio players, DAPs, were created in 1997. The new DAPs store, organize, and play audio sound files on hard disk drives or memory cards. They are often called MP3 players after the name of the system they use for storing. And playing sound. Engineers develop different designs for different companies. They also develop various ways of getting music onto the players. In 2001, Apple launched its iPod, which became the market leader in DAPs. In 2010, Apple said it had sold. 250 million iPods. These girls are sharing an MP3 player to enjoy music together. They are using earphones, but DAPs can also be put in a device called a dock and played through speakers. Downloading and piracy. Modern technology makes it possible for us to do all sorts of new things with our gadgets, but it is important that we are responsible in what we do. For example, technology now allows us to download songs to our music player from online stores such as iTunes or Amazon. But there are other websites that allow illegal downloads, called piracy. Illegal downloads break copyright laws, which give creative artists the right to control their own work and earn money from it. The Recording Industry Association of America says, "Plain and simple." Piracy is bad news. While the term is commonly used, piracy doesn't even begin to describe what is taking place. When you go online and download songs without permission, you are stealing. Artists, songwriters, musicians, record company employees, and others in the industry. All lose money. Portable music. The invention of the Sony Walkman in 1979 changed people's music playing habits. This portable cassette player used headphones and was only slightly bigger than the cassette itself. It is said that the chairman of the Sony company. Wanted it developed so that he could listen to opera on long flights from Japan to the United States. Early models were called Soundabout, but the name Walkman won out. E-readers, the electronic book reading device or e-reader, was developed in the 1990s. Most models today are about the size of a hardcover book, so that you see and read one page at a time. They have buttons or a touch screen for turning pages and other commands. Overtaking print. In July 2010, the bookseller Amazon announced that in the previous three months. It had sold more e-books than printed hardback books. In one month, the company sold 180 e-books for every 100 hardbacks. That shows how much technology is changing the way we read books. Manufacturers say that their e-readers have a no-glare, paper-like display. Pros and cons. 
The following are arguments in favor of the e-reader. It takes up less space than printed books. Its screen can be read in low light. An e-book never goes out of print. E-books are cheaper, although you have to buy the e-reader. E-books can be recovered if lost or damaged. They can be downloaded and read immediately. Printed books use three times more raw materials, paper and ink, to produce, without taking the e-reader into account. The following are arguments against the e-reader. Individual e-books do not work on all readers. Not all printed books are available as e-books. Some authors will not give their permission to do this. E-books do not have the physical feel of a book cover and paper. E-books need batteries. You have to buy an e-reader before you read a book, and it could be lost or stolen. Customers cannot legally resell or lend their e-books to other readers. E-readers do not biodegrade, rot away, while paper is easily recycled. Harry Potter the author J.K. Rowling has not allowed her publisher to agree for her Harry Potter books to be published as e-books. In July 2010, her agent was reported as saying that she was considering changing her mind. Cameras the compact digital camera is the most popular camera today. By the turn of the 21st century, digital, computerized technology was taking over from film photography. Since 1888, cameras had used special liquids to develop images from a thin strip of plastic or film and then make prints on paper. But digital cameras use an electronic process to capture images and save them on memory cards. What are megapixels? Digital cameras are often described in terms of how many megapixels they have. Pixels are tiny dots of light. Digital images are made up of millions of pixels. Megapixels measure resolution, which means the degree of detail visible in an image. The higher the number of megapixels, the more detail there is in an image. More megapixels keep a picture sharp in close-up photography. This works if you enlarge a photograph, too, like this blow-up of the toucan's eye. Point and shoot. Compact digital cameras are sometimes called point and shoot cameras. This is because the photographer does not need to adjust the camera in any way. It operates automatically. You just have to point it at your subject and press the button to take a photograph. Live Preview The other advantage of digital cameras is Live Preview. This means you can see exactly what you are photographing before you shoot on an electronic display at the back of the camera. This is the same as the viewfinder on older cameras. You can also look at what you have just photographed instantly on the display. You can then decide to delete it or take another shot of the same subject. 
With film cameras, photographers had to wait to have the film developed to see their shots. Point and shoot digital cameras take pictures without the need to adjust settings on the camera. Instant cameras. During the second half of the 20th century, the Polaroid instant camera was very successful. This was a film camera that developed photographs very quickly, so that the photographer had an instant print. Digital cameras have replaced Polaroids for most purposes, but the Polaroid company has brought out a new instant digital camera. This is a digital camera with a built-in printer so that you can see your prints at once. Who did that? The first instant camera. Edwin Land, 1909-91, was a U.S. scientist who invented the first instant camera. It was called the Polaroid Land Camera. He founded the Polaroid Corporation in 1937 and produced his first instant camera with black and white film ten years later. In 1963, Land added instant color film that developed within 50 seconds. The Polaroid was the best known instant film camera. Early Polaroid cameras were bulky. They included the film packs for printing the photographs. Making movies. Earlier camera recorders or camcorders used videotape. But digital camcorders record on an internal memory called a hard disk drive. They store hours of film material, which can easily be transferred to a computer or watched on a TV screen. Most compact digital cameras shoot movies as well as still images. They can be watched on the camera's monitor or transferred to a computer. You can be a spy. Now you can buy a ballpoint pen that has a built-in digital video camera with a microphone and a memory stick. The pen records for about one hour from one charge of the battery. It can store 15 hours of video and sound. The pen fits neatly into a jacket or shirt pocket. Advertisers say that the pen is perfect for undercover journalists and private investigators. What they really mean is, it is perfect for spying. This gadget may be fun, but some people would think that it invades their privacy. Compact digital camcorders are small and light. This makes them easy to use while on vacation.